So our relationship with the material world and our attitude towards it can really be one of the primary things that affects how we are in a romantic relationship. If one person feels like they really, really want to make it in the world and they really want to earn a lot more money and have a bigger house and bigger car or whatever, and the other person is not so concerned with that, it could create a division between them. Because if the person who's trying to make it in the world becomes anxious and stressed, maybe even a bit depressed when things don't go their way, it's affecting the partner as well, who might well be happier with less stuff. They might well prefer just to have a less stressful life and downsize a bit. Perhaps there's room for compromise within the relationship. But if the person trying to make it in the world sees themselves, defines themselves in that role and sees themselves as only having value to the extent that they can be a provider and that the more they provide, the more value they have, that could be an illusion because the other one's not seeing them that way. What they're seeing is that the more the person can be present and happy in the relationship, that that's more important. The person who's providing may feel like they're making all this sacrifice for the sake of the relationship, when actually the other partner doesn't actually want them to do that. It doesn't want them to go that far. But the person acting as the provider has so locked into seeing themselves as in that role that they drive themselves too hard and the relationship suffers because they come home and they're unhappy and they're stressed. And if that goes on for years, then that's one of the things which can cause at least one of the people in the relationship to feel like the relationship is just not working. How people relate to the material world can be very different and can be very different at different phases of their life. And that's one of the things that can cause a relationship to fall apart when one person's values change or begin to emerge and they're at variance with the other person's values and beliefs about what they should be doing in their lives in terms of work and goals. When we're really focused on making in the world, we get away with it for a while, but then our inner guide begins to prompt us and pressure us to say, this is fine and there's more to life than this. And that inner pressure can awaken in one member of the couple before the other. Then that can really begin to pull them apart. They're beginning to go in separate directions, have different values in life. They maybe had a wonderful romance to begin with. There was a lot of compatibility. There was a lot of affection. But now at core level, their values are shifting. Their values are changing. If they don't reappraise the relationship and the level of values and changing values, then that can be one of the things that pulls them apart. It's not really an option for somebody to not listen to their inner guide for a long time because that itself can also lead the person into feeling depressed and out of sorts and something not right about life. No matter how much stuff they have, how much success they gain, it's never going to be enough because if their inner source of rightness is saying there's something wrong, it's not going to say it's now okay until they align with their inner guide. One of the ways that romantic love serves us is it helps us to understand another person and to become aware of their needs and how to meet their needs and how to get along with somebody else, especially somebody else that's outside of our circle. Somebody's outside of our family circle who may have a different way of thinking and seeing the world than we do and a different way of seeing the world than our family does and learning how to get along with them. It may be for many of us the first time we've ever done that, the first time we've come out of, out of our shell and really got concerned about another person. Becoming concerned about another person and their well-being is obviously a good thing. That can obviously really align with our inner guide's notion of leading us towards a greater capacity to love because that's a step towards enlightened love. So in that sense, if there's any aspects of romantic love that are an illusion or, or that we have illusions about, there are obviously aspects of romantic love that really serve us, the service to grow as a person. They help us to develop this deeper capacity to love and be concerned for others. And that's a step in the right direction in terms of where our inner guide is trying to take us. So in a sense then, romantic love helps us to become less self-centered and more aware of the needs and wants of others and how we can find a harmonious way of blending with those needs and becoming a mature and aware individual. Mm-hmm.